make it. You can make it. That trial you're going through. God's going to show you what to do. You can make it. You can make it. I don't care what's going wrong. God won't let it last too long. Because you're not in this thing alone. You can make it. That's the whole song. You can make it. You can make it. That trial you're going through. God's going to show you what to do. You can make it. You can make it. I don't care what's going wrong. God won't let it last too long. Because you're not in that thing alone. You can make it. You can make it. You can make it. That trial you're going through. God's going to show you what to do. You can make it. Hallelujah. You can make it. I don't care what's going wrong. God won't let it last long. Because you're not in that thing alone. You can make it. Hallelujah. How many know you can make it? Whatever the test, the trial that you're going through, you can make it on tonight. No matter what your situation is, as long as you got King Jesus, you don't need nobody else. You can make it on tonight. Hallelujah. Giving honor to God who's head of my life. To my pastor, Bishop Blankenship, First Lady Blankenship, Pastor and Sister Bembry, and the leadership staff. I thank and praise God for this opportunity to stand before you. I don't take it lightly because it's an honor and a privilege to stand behind another man's pulpit. But I thank and praise God again for the opportunity that Bishop has given me. And while you're standing to your feet, I'm going to read two scriptures. The first one's coming from Proverbs 24, 16, and then Romans 3, 23. And if you have it, open your Bibles and say amen. <clears throat> Proverbs 24 and 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and come short to the glory of God. Lord, again, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for the grace that you bestowed upon us. We ask you, God, again, to search our heart, search our mind, our soul, and our spirit. God, if you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and strengthen us, O oh God. Clean us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. God, give us an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Help us to deny self and flesh, God. Get Ron out the way and let the Holy Ghost have his way in the name of Jesus. God, if there's any sick among us, send your healing virtue right now in the name of Jesus. In advance, we give you glory, honor, and praise. And everybody says, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And before you take your seat, if I had a thought, it would be I've fallen and I gotta get up. I've fallen 
and I got to get up. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And I'm not going to be before you long. And I'm not one of those dynamic preachers like Bishop, Gwendu. I'm just little old brother Ron. But I've fallen and I can't get up was a popular catchphrase of the early 1990s. It was a culture-based TV commercial. It was originally a commercial for medical services called Life Call. The idea behind Life Call was that many senior citizens live at home alone and may find themselves suddenly in a medical danger or situation that nobody was there to help them. In that kind of situation, they would use their life call button or their badge, which was worn around their neck or around their wrist. When the button is pressed, the person is immediately put into contact with a dispatcher who can send them a paramedic, a fireman, or emergency services. In 1999, the trademark was canceled, and in October of 2002, a similar phrase came, help, I've fallen and I can't get up. I don't know about you, but it seems like the older I get, the harder it is to get up. Praise God, hallelujah. But we know that that particular um, trademark changed from life call to life alert. Both phrases are still currently used today on TV. And while I got home from church this morning, I normally lay across the couch and cut, shut my eyes and take a little cat nap, as they say. And every commercial was life alert. I'm like, okay, Lord, what is going on with this? But falling is a scary thing. A young person can fall and get right back up. But like I said, an older person like me have difficulties getting up. The young person can fall and just pop right back up. But me, when I fall... I have to roll on my side, climb up on my knees, crawl to a piece of furniture that's heavy enough to pull my weight so I can grab hold and get up. Hallelujah. How many know what I'm talking about tonight? Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I got to bring myself back up to the place where I can stand up. But not only do we fall naturally, but we sometimes fall spiritually. In our walk with God, we will always not cross every I and dot every T. He said that backwards. But now we don't have to live a life of sin. But if we fall, we have an advocate, which is our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's our life alert that works on our behalf. We must realize that if we do fall and make a mistake, that we can't stay down for a long time. Because if you stay down for a long time, that's when the enemy will begin to beat you and begin to talk to your mind, begin to tell you that you ain't worth this and worth that. Glory to God. I heard a saying say, if at first you don't succeed, what? Try, try again. Fall could mean coming short of God's glory. And sometimes when we say fall, some people think it's always about sin. But sometimes it could be, again, falling short of God's glory not measuring up to what God wants us to do. The word of God states that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He will come and speak to you saying, you failed and God doesn't love you. God don't care about you. You might as well stay down and keep on falling over and over and over again. But I'm here to let you know it's time for you to tell that devil to shut up. And in the name of Jesus, I'm going to pull myself up. And rise, hallelujah to God. He plants a thought in your mind to see how you're going to react. He puts that seed there. And the Bible says resist the devil and he will flee. That's why we have to have the helmet of salvation to protect our mind. 
Philippians 2 and 5 reads, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We got to keep our mind stayed on Jesus as we go through our daily walk with the Lord. Because the enemy wants to take things from us. The enemy wants to try to mess up our mind even more right now. But I'm here to tell you on tonight that you got to keep your mind stayed upon Jesus. You got to keep a prayer in the back of your pocket. Got to keep a prayer in the front of your burner of your mind tonight. I don't know about you, but he's always planting thoughts just to see what I'm going to do and how I'm going to react. And I got to tell him, get ye behind me, Satan. The blood of Jesus is is against you right now because I know sometimes I make mistakes and sometimes I fall in my life but I'm so glad I can call on the name of Jesus I'm so glad I can tell them all about my problems I can tell them all about my troubles I can tell them that Lord I made a mistake and I'm not a perfect person but Lord I need your help <coughs> hallelujah and what he likes to do is when he throws those thoughts in our mind, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We got to keep our mind stayed upon the Lord. That's why he fights us so hard, saints of God. He knows his time is short. And he know if he can get you out of the will of God and out of the way of God, then he got you. But I don't know about you. You can throw all kinds of seeds in my mind. You can throw all as long as I don't entertain that thought. As long as I don't do what that thought is telling me to do. I don't want to fall in the name of Jesus. But I know sometimes that I will. But I'm glad I can go to my father in prayer and say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of the thought that came in my mind that should not have. Lord, take me back to the altar. Lord, cling me so I can be used for thy glory. That's why he fights us that way. Because the ministry is in us tonight and he don't want the ministry to come to pass. So while you're here, give God praise. <coughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, give God praise in this place. Hallelujah to God. It reminds me in the book of 2 Samuel, the 11th chapter, talks about King David and how he fell. What he did was he looked out of his window and saw Bathsheba out there bathing. He said within himself, if I can just have her. Not only did he say it, but he did it. Hallelujah to God. Even though he was another man's wife. David committed adultery, and not only did he commit adultery, but he committed murder as well. He had Uriah the Hittite, the husband of Bathsheba, one of God's mighty men, killed because she became pregnant. Hallelujah. And David did not repent immediately. But I'm here to tell you, if you fall, you must admit your mistakes, and you must repent. Ain't no time to not be repenting of something that you've done. I don't know about you, but I repent on a daily basis. I repent several times a day because things come in my mind that should not. Sometimes I may say something that I should not say. Some things I may do that I would not do, but I have to repent and ask God to forgive me. So even though we fall and make mistakes, we have to keep ourselves lined up with the will and the word of God. And we know the rest of that story. Nathan the prophet came to King David and told him about a traveler who came to the rich man to get a lamb. The rich man did not want to give up his lamb, but he told him, go get the poor man's little one ewe lamb that he raised up from a little baby, and he prepared it for the traveler. And when King David heard that, he got upset. And said to Nathan, as surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this thing, he must die. 
Nathan told him, King David, thou art the man. He realized, Lord, it's me. I did the mistake. Then Peter, I mean, then David, he repented of his sins. That's where Psalms 51 come together. It says, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to thy tender mercy. Blot out my transgressions, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew the right spirit within me. Take not thy Holy Spirit away from me, but restore the joy of thy salvation. Come on, somebody. You know sometimes you make mistakes, and you got to ask God to forgive you. You got to ask God to help you to overcome the issue in your life. It's okay to tell God, I'm a failure, and I made a mistake. He already knows what's going on, because the eyes of the Lord are in every place, everywhere you go, everything you do, everything you say. God sees and hears it. Hallelujah to God. And saints, we can't wait for somebody to tell us to repent if we fall. I ain't running behind you, Sister Kathy, because you did something wrong. And I got to tell you, you did. That's between you and God. Now, if God tells me to tell you, then I will. But you already know what you did. I'm not saying she did anything, y'all. <laughs> I want to make sure I set that straight. But if you make a mistake, the word of God says in 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The song states, we fall down, but we get up. Saints, if you make a mistake, don't fall. The enemy is trying to hinder your ministry. He's trying to stop you from doing what God has called you to do. When you fall, pick yourself back up. Kick the dust off your feet and keep on keeping on. The enemy wants to keep us bound, trying to steal our joy, trying to take your anointing, trying to destroy your life. That's why he fights us so hard today, saints, because what he lost, we conquered. Satan and his angels was kicked out of heaven Many years ago because of pride. And don't let pride get in the way when you make a mistake, saints of God. Because I dealt that time with myself before years ago. When I made a mistake, I was too proud to go talk to my pastor and tell him that I sinned. Don't do that. Don't do that. You also remember in Matthew 14, Peter, when Jesus appeared to them. As they was in the boat in the storm and he saw somebody walking out and he realized that it was Jesus. And he said, Jesus, if you bid me to come, can I come? And Jesus said, come on, Peter. And Peter began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But as he began to walk, he lost focus. He started looking at the wind and the waves of the sea. And Peter began to sink. But Peter has sense enough to know that said, Lord, save me. And Jesus stretched forth his hand and saved him. My brothers and my sisters today, we sometimes get overwhelmed with trials and tribulations and tests that come in our life. But we got to keep our eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus wants us to know that I'm there for you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you to the end of the world. We can't steer away from God, but we got to get closer to God on tonight. We got to stay focused on God's grace and his mercy and his love for us. That's why he gives us that opportunity to repent. That's why he gives us the opportunity to come to him and say, Lord, it's me standing in the need of prayer tonight. If we fall, Jeremiah, 33 says call on me and I will answer thee and I will show thee great and mighty things he has great things in store for you he has great things in store for me he has great things in store for this church Jesus still saves Jesus still heals and Jesus still delivers but the enemy wants you to fall and not get up saints of God don't be like the lady on the commercial that says help I've fallen and I can't get it up she just lays there until her help come but I don't want to just lay there until
until my help come. I want to roll over. I want to get up on my own and say, Lord, it's me. I need your help. I need your guidance. I need your strength. I need your grace. I need your anointing. Lord, it's me. I know I'm wrong, but Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But we know that the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but he that endureth to the end. Now, to me, when you fall, forgiveness comes with that too. Because you got to get forgiveness. You can't walk around doing wrong, falling, saying things you shouldn't, and think God's going to use you. Ha <laughs> ha, you in the wrong church, because that don't work like that. And what we have to do is when we do make a mistake, we have to go to God and ask him for forgiveness. And we also have to forgive our own selves, saints, because we are our worst criticizer. When we make a mistake, we're harder on ourselves than we are on anybody else, which is a good thing. I'd rather be hard on myself. I'd rather cry out to God and ask him to help me. But we must be careful not to hold a grudge against ourselves. We got to be careful not to hold a grudge against our brother and our sister. We must forgive quickly, saints of God. We have to let it go and send it away. I know that Brother Jeremiah talked about it last Sunday, talking about forgiveness. We got to let it go. The Bible tells us in Matthew 6, the Lord's Prayer, it says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses and forgive those that trespass against us. You got to forgive yourself, but then you got to forgive your brother and your sister. How are you going to say you saved, baptized in the name of Jesus filled up with the gift of the Holy Ghost and having all against your brother or your sister. It cannot be. You cannot minister the right way when you don't have forgiveness or you haven't had unforgiveness in your heart. Shame on you if you saying I cannot forgive my brother because he stepped on my brand new shoes. Who cares? You got to forgive them. It ain't nothing but a materialistic thing. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in Matthew 18, 21, and I'm almost finished. It says, Peter came to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him till seven times. Jesus said unto him, I say unto thee, until seven times, but until 70 times seven. Forgiveness, unforgiveness binds us. Your other person could be free. They don't know if you offended them. They don't know if you not offended them. But if you don't know, it's time to get it right. I tell you, God, it wants to do some things in this church in 2023. He wants to do some things. And none of us in here are perfect. None of us in here, like I said, crosses every T and dots every I. I remember in North Carolina, my pastor used to teach a Bible class. And it seems like every week he was teaching the same thing on forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. And I'm like, Lord, how long are we going to teach or hear about forgiveness? I'm like, Jesus, it's been two years and he's still talking about forgiving somebody. I was like, Lord, who in the church is not forgiven? I actually wanted to stand up and say, who in here is not forgiven so we can move on to another subject? I'm like, come on, people, forgive. It's not that hard. Because I found out when you forgive, you free yourself. You're free. Hallelujah. But just in case that you got an alt against your brother or your sister, because, again, ministries is about to unfold in this church. Revival is about to hit this church 
And we as the body of Christ need to also, if we fall, we ask God for forgiveness and we move on. I've fallen and I got to get up. I can't stay down there. God is waiting on me to do what it is he called me to do. And I got to do it in the name of Jesus. Matthew 5, 23 says, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and rememberest that thy brother have an alt against you, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way, and reconcile to thy brother, and then come back to the altar to offer thy gift. So Sister Chanel, she hit me in the back of my head when she was praising God, and I got upset with her. She didn't know she hit me, but she hit me hard. And I was like, dang, Chanel, you hit me hard. And I'm holding on to something, and she don't even know what she did. But I go to her, and I say, you know what, Sister Chanel? You hit me in the back of my head. I'm sorry. You hurt me. It hurt because I got a headache. But I was holding a grudge against you. Not saying that's true, Sister Chanel. But that's what we have to do. We have to reconcile ourselves. So if you got an alt against somebody, it's time to get it right. God wants to use you in ministry. He can't use you when your hands is like this. They're tied together. Your prayers are being hindered. I don't want my prayer to be hindered. I want God to use me for his glory. Praise God. Parents not speaking to one another. Parents not sleeping in the same room, in the same bed, because you got an alt against your brother or your sister. Brothers and sisters not getting along, coming to church, walking past your brother and your sister, and not even speaking to them. You, what kind of alt you have against your brother or your sister? What have I done to you, Sister Melissa, that you can't speak to me? I complimented you. I said you had a nice dress. But we got to get past that stuff. More unsaved people are coming in this church. And God wants to prepare us for what he has in store for us in 2023. Revival is headed our way. But we got to learn to forgive so we can forgive others. God wants to use us and we have to be right for the ministry's sake. Like I said, more ministries are being unfolded, and God wants to equip us with what he has in store for us. Some of us need to go ahead and birth your ministry. You've been pregnant too long. A pregnancy only lasts for nine months, but some of you have been pregnant for two years. Turn around that baby all that time. That baby going to come out walking and talking with teeth. It's a ministry. Birth your ministry. Get to the place where God can use you. That's my point tonight. God has a calling on your life. And some of you don't want to do what it is God called you to do. But we have to do it, saints. I think somebody said it tonight. We got to relieve the pressure and the stress off of our pastor. Our pastor can't do everything. If he does, we're going to end up killing him. And then we're going to need another bishop. God wants to use you. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on your ministry to be fulfilled. He's waiting on you to step up and say, Lord, it's me. Here I am. Send me. I'll go. Hallelujah to God. It's time to deliver that baby. It's time for you to go into the delivery room and deliver that big old child that you have. Hallelujah. Don't hinder your ministry. Don't be disobedient to what God is telling you. Because if you do, disobedience is what? Say it louder. Sin. And I don't want to be sinning. I want to be used by God. 
I do. And I do want to say this. Sister Ruff, I know she's getting ready to get married, but she encourages me. She does. And I thank God for friends like that. I thank God for brothers and sisters that come and tell you, you can make it. You can do what it is that God has called you to do. And sometimes we be so concerned about what other people think. I don't care about what you think. I'll be 60 years old this year, and I sure enough don't care. If you don't like my tie, whoop de doo I didn't wear it for you anyway. I wore it for myself. But, y'all, it's time to get into ministry. It's time to stop being afraid. The Bible says God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. It's time for you to step out on faith. It's time for you to trust God. Musicians, come on. It's time for you to trust God. God wants to do something tonight. God wants to reveal his purpose for you. Some of you already know your purpose, but you're scared to move because the enemy's trying to trick you. Stop listening to the devil and tell him to shut up. Tell him to shut up. Then sometimes people do tongues and interpretation. We get upset. Well, Lord, why are you using her? Why can't he use you? You ain't trying to do it. He wanted to use you, but you ain't open up your mouth. Woo, my Lord. But God loves us, saints. He cares for us. And he wants us to be prepared in this year for what's coming. We got Narcotic Anonymous coming. We got grief coming. We got Alcoholic Anonymous. We got some other things that are coming down the pipeline. And in order for us to be prepared for these people that come in, we have to be ready spiritually. We have to be prayed up. We have to be fasting. We have to be seeking the face of God. So I fail. Get up! Hallelujah. So if you stand, I'm done. I told you I wasn't going to be long. But it's time to examine yourself tonight what are you running from that you shouldn't be running from what are you not doing that God told you to do but you haven't done it yet some of y'all it's, it's popping in your mind right now stop being afraid and let God do it I will tell you this brother um, Serrano came to me about narcotic anonymous I prayed about it. I told pastor about it. And I told brother uh, Serrano, I said, God didn't say no and he didn't say yes. And then I sent brother Serrano a text. And I said, did the Lord tell you something or something? And he never responded. I said, I know he got my text. But the next morning I got up and I got on my knees in prayer. And God gave me my answer. He said, yes, that's what you need to do. So I'm going to do what it is that God wants me to do. Even though I might be a little afraid, but I'm going to step out like Peter did. And I'm going to try to walk on that water. I'm going to do what God tells me to do. Don't hinder your ministry, saints. Don't hinder your ministry. God wants to use you. Open up to the Lord tonight. Surrender to him. Surrender your all to him. He can't, he, can't, he can't do it if you won't do it. You have to unfold your arms and say, Lord, I trust you. This goes hand in hand with what Pastor Jarvis spoke this morning. He talked about sacrificial living. It's a sacrifice. But you can do it. You can do it. So tonight, I want you to come around the altar. And whatever it is you're dealing with, if you've fallen, if you came short to God's glory, then you need to repent. Then you need to ask God to forgive you. Then you need to tell God, here I am, send me, I'll go. I want to be used in the ministry. I want to be used for thy glory tonight, God. Use me. Don't skip past me, Lord. Don't skip past me, Jesus. I need you, Lord, in my life. 
I need you in my ministry, oh God. I can't do it with it. Come on, lift up those hands and tell the Lord, I need you tonight, Jesus. Lord, we give it to you, Jesus. Lord, we give our minds to you tonight. We give our heart to you tonight, Lord. We give our soul to you tonight, Lord. Examine me, Lord. I'm open like a book, Lord. Do what it is you have to do to get me to the place where I can be used by you, Lord. made a mistake but he loves you he cares for you he loves you he's reaching out to you reach back to the Lord tonight reach back throughout the Lord tonight let God use you in ministry hallelujah by the grace in his eyes his grace was an ocean we're all sinking so heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss and beats violently inside of my chest and I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way
going to surrender to the Lord tonight. Walk into your ministry. Birth your ministry. It may be hard. There may be pain. But you're going to be all right. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let God do it tonight. Let God do it tonight. Surrender to the Lord tonight. In the name of Jesus. Stop running and run to the altar. Stop running away from your calling and run to the altar. He's still waiting on you. He's still waiting on you. Surrender to the Lord tonight. Surrender to the Lord tonight. Come on, tell the Lord, yes. Lift up your hands and say, yes, Lord. I will do what you call me to do. I will stop being stubborn. I will stop being disobedient, Lord. I will stop being afraid. Of your power, we want 
Lord God is flowing in this oh, house. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord God, you are ministering, you are talking, you are healing, you are touching. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God's presence is flowing in this house. There's a deep ministry that is happening. Brother Kressler came up to me this morning and said, this is neck. And tonight I say, this is neck. Forgiveness is flowing. Repentance is flowing. That's what's going to jumpstart your ministry. That's how you can birth your ministry. And when you finally do birth your ministry, it's your baby. You got to feed it. Change its diaper. Be up with it late at night. Growing pains. But if you stick with it, they grow up to something beautiful. Ministry is work. It is hard work. But you birth it, so you have to love it. It's part of who you are. It is who you are. And you just shared it with the world, with this church. And Brother Serrano, a pastor, there are so many opportunities now to get involved in a ministry. You come out of alcoholism or you're grieving, you need help with parents. Any, there's so many ministries going on that you can get involved with. Don't just sit on the pew now. It's, we're going too far. We're going too far. God is calling. He's preparing you to get involved. And if you don't get involved, if you saw this morning, they, we were crowded here this morning. It was old neck. If you are not going to get involved, I promise you, these people who come through these doors are going to get involved. Amen. Let us, let us truly be the church God has created us to be. And that's servants. We're servants. We are servants. Amen. Let's pray this week that God place a burden in our heart and we
we have an art against our brother or our sister, let's make sure that we get it right. Let's make sure that's our responsibility. If you've been offended, they may not know, go tell them. Hey, you're offending me. Let's talk about it. Let's get it right. And once you do, you'll feel a heaviness fall off of you. And God says, now you are ready. Now I can use you. Amen. Lord God, thank you for this mighty service tonight, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the great service this morning, Lord God. Lord God, we come expecting, Lord God, great things, and you have done it, Lord God, exceedingly and abundantly, Lord Jesus. We pray now, Lord God, that we can take in this word, Lord God, we heard this morning and tonight, Lord God, and apply it to our lives, Lord Jesus. Let it be a change, Lord God, every time the word is being preached or spoken, Lord God, let it be a change in our lives. Help us to go forth this week and be that light. Help us not to continue to hide our light under a bushel. Let's begin to tell other people about what's going on at NAC, about what the church is doing. Because God is in the midst and he's changing lives. Tell them your testimony and watch them begin to come Watch their lives begin to change, and that's what it's about. Lord, we give you thanks, praise, and honor, and glory, Lord God. Thank you for this service, Lord God, today, Lord Jesus. We give you praise and honor, Lord God. Let's give God a great hand clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go out this week with a changed heart with the forgiveness in our heart, with repentance in our heart, even to our co-workers. We've done them wrong. They've done us wrong. Amen. Let God use us. Are there a snack bar? Let's go out and support Sister Jonisha. It's going to be great. It's going to be a great week. Let's come back ready on Tuesday if you're going to the Alcoholic Anonymous program. And come back Wednesday for Pastor Bible Study. Ready and ready to go. In Jesus' name, you are this man.